what is going on guys welcome back to a new video today we're going to be talking about the asymptomatic uh or sorry asymptotic notation um so why is this an essential tool for becoming an essential or an efficient programmer so basically what this fancy word here means that i can barely pronounce and that you probably want to pronounce um, is just it's a runtime right so when writing programs uh, it's important to make smart programming choices so that the code is more efficient computers seem to take no time evaluating programs but when scaling programs to be uh, to deal with large amounts of data writing efficient code becomes the difference between a success and a failure in computer science we define how efficient a program is by its runtime we can't just time the program however because different computers run at different speeds my dusty old pc does not run the fast as your brand new mac you know uh, so programming is also done in different languages how do we account for that runtime so we need a general way to define a program's runtime um, so we do this in this type of notation and before i continue i want to say if you guys are enjoying the series so far uh, make sure to subscribe like the video but i really appreciate the support here so with a uh, symptotic notation we calculate a program's runtime by looking at how many instructions the computer has to perform based on the size of the program's input for example if i were calculating the maximum elements in a collection I would need to examine each element in the collection that examining step is regardless uh, of the language used or the CPU that's performing the calculation we define the size as the input n now I may be looking at through a collection of 10 elements 100 elements thousand elements but we need to know how many steps are being performed relative to the input so so n is used in place of a specific number there's a second input uh then we may define that as a size of that input as m as in mango now there are varieties of syntactic asymptotic notation that focus on the different concerns so some of them will communicate the best case scenario for the program for example if we're searching for a value within a collection the best case was if we found it in the first um in the first element right like, like the first go um we found the element and the worst case is we, we searched for the value through the entire data set and did not find it at all now typically programmers will focus on the worst case scenario so there is an upper bound of runtime to communicate it's a way of saying that things might get this bad or slow but they won't get any worse so we'll learn how this all um lore, um connects with one another and how it benefits you uh, so before i go any further on this um just know like okay why is this helpful for you and why is this like beneficial for you um think of it this way like if you're doing ever doing a coding interview you probably have to do a leak code and at the end of like trying to solve that leak code or if you did solve it you will always be expected to say like what the runtime and also what the space complexity uh, so the time complexity and the space complexity of that leak code problem is so if you still don't know what leak code is i will do another series going through leak code but um basically um this is very important so i would just lock in just try to get as much information and it'll just make more sense if you do some more research after watching this um but what is asymptotic notation cheetahs ferraris life all are fast but how do you know which one is the fastest 
you can measure a cheetah's and a Ferrari's speed with the speedometer. Can you, you can measure life with years and months, but what about computer programs? In fact, they can run, you can run, you can time a computer program, but different computers run at different speeds. For example, a program that takes 12 nanoseconds on one computer could take 45 milliseconds on another. Therefore, we need a more general way to gauge this uh, program's runtime. So instead of timing the program, uh, through asymptotic notation, we can calculate a program's runtime by looking at how many instructions the computer has to perform based on the program's input size, which is n. For instance, a program that has an input size of n may tell the computer to run 5 to the n squared plus 3n plus 2 instructions. We'll get to know how we get this kind of expression in future exercises. Nevertheless, there is a still a fairly messy and uh, large expression. So when you have this, let's say you're trying to calculate, okay, uh, you have this expression and you want to see, okay, how fast is the computer running? Well, the easiest way to do this is you just literally look at the highest power of n and that's your runtime. So if it's uh, 5n squared here is the largest, right? Because n squared is greater than n. Um, and of course, n is greater than a constant. So this is the largest. And constants don't matter. They're just there, right? Constants really don't matter. So the runtime of this program would be n squared. So let's see. For asymptotic notation, we drop all of our constants, like I said. Because n becomes extremely large, the constants will make like little to no difference at all. So after changing our constants, we have n squared plus n. Now, if we take each of these terms in an expression and graph them, we see that n squared grows exponentially faster than n. For example, if n is a thousand, we know that just n is a thousand, but n squared is one million. So of course it's gonna grow faster. So as you can see, the n squared term is much more significant significant than the n term. When the n is larger than 100, the difference becomes even more significant. So we won't even consider n because of the fact that it is like this. Thus for this program, we would describe the runtime in terms of n squared. There are three different ways we could describe the runtime of this program. Big theta um, of n, big O of n, or O of n and then omega of n. The difference between the three uh, um, and when to use will be detailed in the next exercises. You may see the term execution count used um, in evaluating algorithms. So execution count is more precise than big O notation. The following method uh, add up to depending on how we count the number of operations, we can be as low as 2n, as high as 5n plus 2. Uh, 2n because of the fact that we have this uh, for loop right here. The for loops count as n, which I'll get to uh, later here. So then um, when determining execution count, uh, can increase uh, but regardless of the execution counts um, with the number of operations can grow roughly proportional to that so big O notation is a way to formalize fuzzy counting it allows us to talk formally about how the runtime of an algorithm grows as the inputs grow, as we will see, big O doesn't focus on details, only the trends. You can watch this video as well. Uh, it's a pretty good video here. But moving on, um, we're going to be learning about the other big O notations, uh, like big theta, big O, um, big omega, all of that. Um, in the next video so stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one